Ladies and gentlemen, the MLG Spring Arena 2 is not done yet for this evening. We have one final matchup to show you, and it is going to determine who ends up facing Stefano in the winner's bracket final. TSL Paul Empire Violet. Going to be a great game, guys, so let's get straight into it. First map is going to be none other than Taldor and Malta, the same map that we saw Paul go crazy on. This is Don Rangu earlier on in the winner bracket. <laughs> that we did, and can he do it again against another Zerg opponent who I feel is also consistently underrated, but does so mm -hmm. well at these events. It is Empire's Violet. He is in the Red Trunks, and he is playing Zerg to the southwest of the Taldrum Altar versus his opponent. It is TSL Pult in the Blue Trunks, playing Terran to the Northwest. And Violet's had a very sharp increase in results at MLG. I mean, he finished 32nd at Providence, which is a decent result yeah, considering that's the, uh, the end championship of the year. Uh, but then he came into 2012 with a strong 5th, 6th place finish at the yep. Winter Arena. And then the Winter Championship, 7th to 8th place finish. A very strong finish there as well. Uh, but Pult, on the other hand, uh, it hasn't really hit the right buttons at MLG either, but you know, neither is Stefano, and look where Stefano is right now. Pult finishing 10th at Orlando last year, 13th and 14th at uh, the most recent event championship as well, which is still pretty damn good. But of course, uh, not to the caliber of these players. These are winners, ladies and gentlemen. That they are, without question. And Polt has been on fire throughout this entire tournament. Yeah. He consistently impresses me and has been doing so really since his big win at Assembly. He just gets better and better, goes from strength to strength. Yep. Has only recently fallen down, of course, in the Dreamhack event against Thorzane and some interesting and innovative TVT play. But now we see Thorzane taken out of the tournament fairly quickly and Polt continues having taken down some titans on his way. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that TVT, uh, Pult hadn't really been practicing TVT that much. I mean, of course he plays it, but the amount of practice and teamwork from TSL that went into improving Pult's Terran versus Zerg was incredible. He started losing versus Stefano until he eventually beats Stefano. Uh, and of course, that has now played into his strongest matchup, pretty much. I mean, his Terran versus Protoss is still incredibly strong also. Yep. Uh, but his Terran versus Zerg is just something spectacular. And uh, these positions, by the way, I mean, I'm cringing a little bit for Violet here, uh, especially because any design two base push, anything along tank pushes here, uh, becomes very difficult to deal with as a Zerg player. Of course, tanks underneath the natural very yes. frustrating thing to deal with. And uh, taking the gas, sniping the drones on the, uh, the edge of the mineral line, something that Violet, of course, will have to start creep spreading towards to defend. Yeah, it's really unpleasant, isn't it? And hell, that gas is always a freebie. As long as you've got some view up there, you can take it out with Marines. Yeah. And you don't even have to worry about that. So this map is a bit of a pain for Zerg in that respect. Violet will no doubt be up to the challenge, however, without question. Command Center just about finished here for Pult at his natural. No aggressive opening from either players just yet. And Pult starting off this, the way that he tends to, nice and standard, going for Reactor Hellion after Expand and... What I've seen from Polt actually with this is not so much holding creep spread back because that's just really difficult to do now. He just goes in with it and more often than not does significant economic damage. Yeah, so we'll have to follow if Polt's going to try something along those lines. One thing to note is that Violet came into the scene as such an aggressive player. Uh, you know, one base plays, two base plays. Uh, but this time we actually see him going for the four queen build here to extend that creep as far as possible while joining intensively yep. here to lay in the gases until that five minute mark. Uh, and that means speed's gonna be delayed, but lucky, lucky over here, we actually have a starport being constructed. So we are gonna have a follow up of a cloak banshee, which is actually an amazing strategical decision here. Considering where really is Violet gonna take a third base unless he builds Ling's early to bring the rocks down? Is he gonna go across map? Yep. Is he really gonna do that? Or is Queen's gonna creep spread in time before a club match gets there? No. So that's a great little maneuver there. And uh, and looks like he's gonna try to go the distance and this club banshee is going to be awesome against this. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely wonderful, assuming that Paul actually finds it, and he certainly should if he's paying any attention whatsoever. Once he's got the map control with these Hellions, he'll be able to find out what's going on. There's the cloak immediately he needs to stop following that, that one up. He gets one. Ah, he gets one, but that's good. 
That slows down one, of course, uh, wave of creep spread, but that's what he kind of needs to do with these creep tumors because with double queens, he can, if he's on top of it, extend quite heavily the creep towards that third base. But if Pulse starts to slow it down, of course, that's going to play towards the Banshees. Indeed. That it will. The four queen build is wonderful, but if it can't get where it needs to go, then it's not so effective, and that's a lot of minerals spent there that could have otherwise been spent otherwise. And the command center follow-up here from Polt once again will try and expand behind this if he has the ability to do so. And at the moment, Violet doesn't really have an answer to that, has no way to threaten it. And even if the Banshees got there, the queens were there to protect it, is he going to have a lair? No, not really here. Uh, and the key thing to note too is that the six Hellions about to be out, potentially another two as well, and they will soften the Queens. Yes. And that makes it even easier for the Banshee. So this third base, I'm so worried for Violet here. It's a terrible way to start the first map of this best of three here in the winner bracket semi-final and here together, hand in hand, Hellion and Banshee or Flame and Rocket together here will start to be a nuisance. Indeed it will, and here we go. The harassment begins for Polt. It was scouted by Violet, but it's not that he can really do an awful lot about it just yet. Sporecaller is on its way up, so Polt takes four Banshee, four Banshee kills, six now, looking to take the seventh, which he grabs. It gets out there just before. Excellent execution here by Polt. Doesn't know about this base down at the bottom here. Stops yeah. a curiously positioned Sporecaller, goes for surround. Violet oh. jumps in for it right there, and. Polt caught completely off guard. Oh my god, he was focusing on the sport crawl and wasn't looking. And great move by Violet. And the third base survives. If Polt had taken that sport crawl, I'm sure he would have started to look about a third base. Uh, he would have seen the lack of third base at that south location. Oh, hello. All that thought, those four lings. How the hell did they get in? There's a tiny gap, unfortunately, there that they're able to get into. It won't really be too much of a problem. It'll be cleaned up, but he gets a free SCB that he really shouldn't have gotten and some scouting information that he also should not have gotten there. And Violet took a bit of a gamble to take that base in the position that he did, but... It paid uh, off. It did indeed. A slight blunder by Polt to focus all of the Hellions down Spore Crawler. Didn't kill it. And I almost thought that putting that Spore Crawler there was terrible, but it turns out it's a fantastic idea. And uh, now the tank production has started to gear towards that form of push down to the Zelnog Tower. Banshee coming down and he's going to look for this third base. We'll see. Wait, what? What? what mm, mm, wait, mm, no third base here. And of course, we'll be like, oh, wait, is he going to Spire? Or is he taking the third base down in the bottom right? Things that Polt has to be thinking about right now. He and does. he may actually throw turrets down. And there's a turret coming down, actually. Uh, and he may actually misread. What's Which coming down because Terrazoo players don't don't take bases that far away. It's so dangerous it to risky. do so. It really, really is. But perhaps you should be thinking now that creep spread seems to be a much more viable thing to do since the patch. Maybe we do see more Zerg players start to take that base because it's less of a risk because you can spread much quicker in that direction. And uh, one one upgrades on the way now uh, for Port. Third command center going to make its way across. Paul still not looked for this third base, which is really weird. Uh, I mean, he he, the, the, he can assume there's a third base somewhere, but he's going to look. So uh, right now, I really do believe that he thinks that he's playing against Mutalist style here. Uh, of course, with a turret placement there, very cautious marine, spre uh, marine spreading across yep. the arena uh, so far. I'm bringing these rocks down, but so far, so good for both players, to be honest. Neither of them at an advantage or disadvantage in the game, I think, actually. Uh, with a upgrade lead that Violet has established with double evolution chambers pretty early on. It's not looking too bad for him with an whole... Oh, so many lings. So many lings. That's a target rich environment for that Banshee, but it's heading back some Bane lings being created as well. Interesting stuff. And then a hell of a lot of lings simply come down on the third base here, but plenty of Marines to try and clean that up. And a good arc of engagement for the Terran player. And hey, there's a target rich environment, isn't it? We've got speed banelings coming in. Aww. Picks off quite a few. Oh, nice shot. That that was almost upsetting to me, honestly, as we hear the death cry of those poor little banelings. Yeah, that was a little bit sad there, actually. Um, but they do die. They're horrible death. 2-2 two -two on the way now for Pulp. You know, having a great economy here. Oh, yeah. Uh, a great setup of upgrades. But the Hive is now on the way for Violet. And of course, we'll be wanting to build towards the Ultralis Cavern 
Ult Swiss are fantastic once again. Uh, Queen is going to go on that, uh, fall down on that Zalnaga Tower in the center there. A 19 kill Banshee is dead, however, to follow Aww. that one up. I guess it certainly paid for itself. Another expansion for Violet over to the side here. Polt has not made an effort to harass those areas as of yet. And uh, for the first time in this game. Hello. Polt's going to see that the mineral patches oh, uh, have there. already mined 400 minerals. And it's like, oh. Oh, well. Oh, well, I guess that's fair then. Well, he's finding a decent position there, but he wants to watch out for that fungal, needless to say. There's the cloak. And picking off an infester here would be absolutely wonderful. That's what he's going to try and do. Will we get a Hail Mary from that fester? We will. It lands it, but not quite quick enough, unfortunately. And that is, as they say, is that. So, uh, two extra factories coming down. This has been a trademark of Pulp for the entire game long. Folks are not great, it's just a single tank. Uh, or factory producer tax and then ramps it up uh, by 200% there, or 300% should I say, uh, to, to get that. Yeah, those two additional factories. That the weird change yeah. for Pulse actually in this tournament, as Wolf accurately pointed out earlier, he generally doesn't like to go past two factories, but he's been doing three this entire tournament and it's paid off for him so very much. Really has ramped up his tank production. Banshee comes in to harass once again. A couple of infested terrans thrown out in response here. Upgrades looking astonishing for Violet at the moment. Yeah, I mean, he's been pretty much untouched. Yeah. He lost, uh, you know, I don't know, six, seven drones early on to that initial Banshee, and that's it. He's actually had three rain. He has yeah, a fourth a base. Ridiculously he, has the cabin. he has a fifth base on the right-hand side here. And Port's really, uh, uh, you know, a player that does have belie uh, you know, belief and trust in his late game. We yeah. saw it many times against Dong Regu that he is easily capable of playing the later stages and now he does know of course that it's time to go his upgrades are kicking in that creep two, is two. almost as a natural and this is Taldorim also he's not fucking around nice bailing crash there combined with the fungal growth not necessarily an efficient trade quite a lot of banelings used there something we pointed out earlier in this tournament is that a lot of baneling usage here e against Polt in fact mm. has been inefficient but Violet has a ridiculous economy, could potentially afford that. Here comes another charge, getting in there before the tanks deploy, but once again, a lot of Banelings go down and not so many of those Marines. And looking to crash through that wall up in the center. There's a nice flank with the Banelings. Wonderful clean up there by Violet. Tank line's pretty deep, a good fungal there, but not enough units for Violet, but he does go Hello. into the third base mineral line. Oh no, Goodbye. Balls. That's your entire mineral line destroyed, and uh, that is giving him painful memories of the matchup against Symbol earlier. That was unpleasant, and Pult's SCV count plummets. 28 killed by Violet at this stage. His third is being ravaged, even threatened on that other command center, as we've got Pult moving in deep onto the creep to attempt to get position, eat some fungal growth for his trouble. And the second one there as well, but the Ultralis are in the way fully upgraded Ultralis just in 30 seconds time here and they will smash everything. The highlight of Pult's play in this tournament here is that Thor gets unlocked is his macro ability to be able to build 12 Marines per cycle. Even though he has a lot of money backed up, he took a big hit to his income tab and now he's moving so aggressively on creep and oh my god, this is going to be... <laughs> Oh my god, I'm actually having deja vu of Stefano this right one. now, right here. Oh, you're gonna see what's coming! Oh no! And Paul was not ready for that one as the Zerglings run rampant over the remainder of Paul's force on creep. Uh, catches the tanks on siege again. And Violet is dominating Paul in this first game here on Taldorim. And, you know, this fully upgraded Zerg army versus not so upgraded uh, Terran army. Indeed but not. Once again, Pult showing that he can still build 11 Marines, 2 Marauders per cycle. He manages to hold on for now, but the, novel, the, the second wave is coming. Remember, fully upgraded units come crashing through. Yep, but Ultralis gravely trying to slice its way through there. Nice fungal, a hell of a lot of medivacs, but not a lot of marines to heal, unfortunately. Violet continues on with the pressure. Pult supply plummeting. 80 drones for Violet across five bases. Once again, remaining untouched. No harassment from Pult as he's continuously put under pressure. He has indeed, and Violet on the edge of taking the first map here. Not over yet as uh, Pult has shown a relentless, uh, and I quote Wolf himself, Never surrender, never give up, or never give Very up, never true. surrender. We're not sure quite which it was, but anyway, uh, you know, it still applies what I said. It still makes sense. It's everyone. all good, bro. But with 3 3 now completed, Paul isn't going to give up anytime soon. No. And 
Well, with three, three Marines and Marauders with good medivac count. If there aren't enough fungals, if there aren't enough units, this can easily turn around. Mm. Well, here comes a little Ling run by from Violet to uh, deal yet more damage. Of course, at this stage, on five bases, Ling's are essentially free. And you know what? It's probably a good idea to start cleaning up the creep if it's at your natural expansion, which yeah. it is. So let's try and do a little bit for that one. At the moment, he can rest assured that his fourth base over to the north of the map is untouched. It is a planetary fortress. It will be difficult to deal with. but. Violet can do whatever he wants. He's essentially playing in a sandbox here because his opponent has not touched his economy. And the moment... Uh-oh. Hold that thought. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, God. That is not nice to watch. The Marine count goes up in smoke. Supply plummets faster than you've ever seen as the line breakers come up the ramp. And it turns out creep up to the natural is a terrible thing. And this could very well be the end of Polk in this yeah. game as the Ultralis smash through into the natural and Polk trying his best to resist. The Medivacs using harsh language. They have nothing else at their disposal. Reinforcements coming in from the back now. Great positioning on the tanks is going to make things a little bit difficult for Violet to seal the deal and Polt holds on once again. And uh, Violet doesn't know about that fourth base in the top right and that's actually keeping Polt in the game now. These first few links are going to go up there to check it out. Ultralis on the third base come crushing through here. But as soon as Violet knows about that base, he can easily turn across to go kill it. Or he can go straight for the heart here of Pulse. That he can, and that is what he's looking to do by the looks of it. Tank once again caught on siege, and unfortunate, and not all that common from Polt, honestly. We've seen amazing positional play from him throughout this tournament, but Violet is making a mockery of the Terran defense of this stage. So yeah, he's throwing a lot of units away here. Uh, you know, kind of sloppily keeps running into to the main base where tanks are spread out and Paul does get another clear up of course he keeps taking losses in his economy down to just 34 SCVs and uh sorry excuse me there are oh, five bases of the greatest spire is on its way with seven more infestors he starts to change his composition here mm -hmm. uh, of course the marauder is quite a nuisance Indeed. Well, it, it's the same problem that Idra was having with Ultralisks earlier in the tournament. Once the Infest account is gone, what a player like Polt will do is he will make a mockery of your Ultras by running rings around them with Stim and kiting them to Kingdom Come if you have no way to stop it from moving. The other way to do it is with Lynx, but that was an exceptional tank salvo to start with there by Polt, who will try and hold this position, and it looks like he's going to be able to do it. Whoa, that was a lot of wasted units it again. Actually and was, and the thing it's actually was. bleeding. The it's not just wasted units, it's wasted units right before a tech switch, which is the worst time to throw units. Well, he didn't have Corruptors out, the greatest by the finish, but he's not ready to tech over. And now he has to rebuild the same composition, and it is pushing Pulp back again. Oh, that Fungal is massive, and half the medevac count is annihilated there. And that was a saving grace there for Violet. Things could have gone very, very wrong very quickly. These tanks are doing so much damage there, just raining down on the Infested. A couple of Infested Terrans go down, but Marines come to back up, and once again, Pult stays alive. How does he do it? It's an exceptional resilience and obvious courage in the face of adversity. Unfortunately, he has still not been able to harass mm. the exceptional economy of Violet. Violet's got some interesting ideas. He's got Ventral Sacks on the way, some more Banelings coming in here as well, but... Did he bleed himself out too much on Polt's defenses? Because Polt has cleaned up a hell of a lot of creep. Yeah, and we do have a run by onto the natural there. Handful of links just cutting off the reinforcements here, ready to sandwich the main army of Polt on that Zell Naga Tower. It's going to get cleaned up, so the opportunity is only a limited amount of time here. Violet needs to go before the reinforcements actually get in there. He's trying to set up his infestors, and he's going to grab a large chunk, and this will push him to go. The tanks are unseaged. Indeed. Violet waiting for the last few Ultralis may be his downfall. It might. It very well might. He's already... But th there's still a massive supply difference. Let's not just take it away from Violet. He's been sitting on five bases for as long as he damn well pleases. This is still going to be a very hard fight for Pulp, but that tank spread is three, even four lines deep. 
And he's got a great position on the natural as well. He can nail down reinforcements as they come in. I'm curious to see what this ventral sack upgrade is all about. I think it's not really relevant, but for some reason here, he's not really focused on that, but this is very relevant. Indeed it is. The flank comes in to try and crush the tank out. He's able to do that. Another wave of tanks deployed behind that. The investors are here this time around. Many of them getting targeted down at the process. Reinforcements continue to come in from Paul. He's got a great position by the Zelnaga Tower, nailing down Ultra after Ultra. Investors taking fire as well, but this position is eventually overrun at great cost by Violet. Yeah, great cost, and uh, well, was it worth it though? He does have that fifth base up and running on the right-hand side. He's running out of minerals in his main natural and soon to lose his third as well. Does have still a good army size compared to Fault, of course, down at 65 army supply. And that was a lot of tanks, uh, you know, destroyed there. Nine more investors, banelings being morphed on the side here. Pult, though, is going to try and drop. There is a drop being sent off on the right-hand side. It's trying to work around to the back. To get to the back it's expansion, going to be spotted a mile away. Thanks to Violet. Oh, maybe not. He's making the turn. There is another Ling here just to try and block up an expansion that's going to see that medevac on its way over. So an interception could end up happening here. But at least we're seeing harassment now from Pulp. Unfortunately, there is more harassment. That is a line of mules that are not going to be there anytime soon. And half of that mineral line cleaned up very nicely here by Violet. Four Corruptors coming to finally make that transition, which has been so awkward for Violet in this game. Uh, and here's the drop, though. Here's the money source maybe of Violet's army. Maybe because no response coming in from Violet yet. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But uh, Pult's about to do a lot of damage to Violet. Yes, he is. Those are plus three Marines, and that means your drone line is going to get absolutely decimated. Good God, that was Violet. Ugh, couldn't bear to watch uh-oh, and now he's going to lose the hatchery, which is going to push Violet almost all in here. He doesn't have an income. He's uh, about to morph some uh, Broodlords. Holt has to be very careful. The army scans the army on that Zelnaga tower. He knows the force is there. Four Broodlords coming. There is a little run by again to the third base of Holt. But uh, more importantly, these two Titans are about to collide. Ultra very damaged there, down a half health already before yeah. the fight already begins. Surprised not to see a lot of queens. A lot of people have been saying throughout this tournament that the reason why we're seeing a lot of ultralists is because there's a massive proliferation of queens due to the actual buff. But in this case, we do not see that. There's only two queens. Now it's ultra and broodlord and heavy infester count. This is an absurdly hard army to deal with. Holt is pre-spread to try and make that work, but he's using the Broodlords to break the tank line oh, first. Oh, he's on siege, and that's going to unlock Violet's army. Here it goes. This is all or nothing, perhaps, for Violet here as he goes against a much weakened Holt. The bungles are beautiful here. Spreading is not making that much of a difference. Ultralisks are heavily weakened already. Can Holt actually hold on? It would be astonishing if he could. Now the Vikings go down, and that means the Broodlords survive. And there's no answer to the Brutalists. They can't get underneath. Uh, uh, the Marines can't get underneath. Another hatchery's actually gone down there, but it was not mining anyway. Paul has to face the real deal here. And that is this scary army, Ultra Skin Fester. No answer to the energy on those Infestors, unfortunately, no, here for Paul. indeed not. That's the wonderful thing about Infestors late game. It's just about getting that energy back. He's got plenty more where that came from. Paul has no answer at this stage, as you have accurately pointed out. And after an astonishing defense and a brave attempt at a comeback, Violet is going to overrun him in this game yeah. and take the first on Taldarim. Unless Paul wants to float his base, which it looks like he does, yeah, I mean, Polt's taking off three hatcheries with that single drop now. It's just lifting up his production facilities and going to camp around the He's planet. He's still mining. There's actually a CC up to the top here. He's medium distance mining here, putting a stop on He's not dead yet. This yeah. is ridiculous. Paul refusing to die. No, he's not going to... Well, he's refusing to die here, but it's very, very difficult for Paul to get in this game. That single drop, though, has killed three hatcheries. It's actually trying to target down the greatest fire in the main now, but will get picked up finally. But uh, there are two Broodlords, which uh, kind of neglect all these barracks and find fortress <laughs> rubbish as Violet still wants to close this up. Has a mining base on the left-hand side here as well. Paul trying to keep in this game. But he only has mm. 500 minerals, has to rebuild so many supply depots. Yeah. Here's the thing. The, the one thing that Polt might be able to do is to drop on this base to the west. It's heavily oversaturated. This is the only thing Violet's currently mining from right now. 
but it does involve moving your defenses, which, well, that doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? There's even a Ling coming into the mineral line of Pult here. The rest of Violet's army is looking to try and finish this off. You know, it's absurd to even say that Paul could come back from this, but we've seen him do crazy things before. But I have a feeling this might be the end of him as Violet comes down on the remainder of that base. There's the GG. And after an astonishing attempt to stay in the game, Paul goes down in the first game to Dr. Violet, who I wouldn't call that surgery so much, honestly. That was a sledgehammer to the gut over and over again. Yeah, and Violet kind of won the game at the 10-minute mark in his, uh, in his mind there, but it took 35 minutes to actually kill Pult. Yeah. But uh, some experts, some guys that were watching that very closely mm -hmm. in the corner. You have any words for that, Wolf yeah. and Rob? Actually, uh, I basically feel like watching this game is like watching every other game Pult has played this weekend. It was just like, if you actually take away the names of Pult versus Zerg players, <laughs> you actually take the nameplate away and like you scramble them around and had someone look at the bot, like he wouldn't know which game he was watching because they've all looked so similar. It's like Zerg players attacking into Pult with Ultralisk. This time we saw Violet skip Banelings. And at the end of the day, he had four Broodlords mm -hmm. and Pult was like, I haven't seen this unit all weekend. He's like, well, <laughs> this is changing the way I look at this a little bit. Um, but he, he, I feel like, to be honest, in this game, Pult, I could see it with him floating his building. He's like, I'm so much better than Violet. Like, actually, I'm serious. Like, I could see it with what he was doing. He's like, I actually almost won this game. I want to tire this guy out even more. Mm. And maybe I can still even out multitask him 50 supply to 150 supply because he was outdoing him over and over and over again. Pult looks so dominant. He lost that game early on, like you said, but he looks so dominant throughout the late game. You talked about those Broodlords for a little bit, and he was actually almost able to completely eliminate that threat with only two Vikings as yeah. well, right? Like that, if, yeah. if if those would have been in two separate places, they actually wouldn't have died because he couldn't hit them both with fungal at right. once. And just Pult's ability to really turn any game, like a completely losing game, into a huge endurance match and tire out your opponent, that's, I mean... That's I pretty sick. I, I, I really feel like Pult's attitude for this game is, is or for this next upcoming game is gonna be great, considering that he played from behind and still looked so, so good. Yeah, he, he really did. And I wonder if he had taken the, the courage, I suppose you could say, to pick up eight Marines earlier. Imagine if he'd picked up eight Ooh, Marines and actually dropped dropped to actually bit, drop yeah. that fifth base, you know, because that was a big turning point in that game when that actually dropped down, but it was Already too late, unfortunately, there for Pult, but, yep. you know, that that's something in the heat of the moment that's very difficult to do considering you're, you're actually under fire and under attack consistently. Yeah. You know, uh, and behind, Violet. right? One yeah, thing and behind us. Violet did the, differently than some of the other Zergs that were playing against Pult is he did not overmake Banelings. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. strongly feel that was something that a lot of the other Zergs were kind of wasting some of their gas, so mm -hmm. that was something to consider. I mean, he didn't overmake Banelings. He traded decently uh, in most of the engagements, so... I think that's something that really, really helped him against Polt because Polt just does not <laughs> lose to Banelings. <laughs> Check out that. that grab. That is silly. That is extremely silly. I think that, that game just demonstrates what a five base Zerg can do, which is anything he wants to. And if you don't do anything about that, yeah. then he's going to just keep smashing into you over and over again. And I kind of agree with Wolf's point there. Polt showed exceptional dominance in almost every engagement in that game, but he was completely outnumbered for about 25 minutes. He didn't have the money. He had no opportunity to harass. It's unfortunate he didn't spot that third base location mm -hmm. sooner because the Cloak Banshees, while effective, could have been much better. Yeah. Well, there were even like a couple moments there too. The the one big engagement in the center where Polt actually just left his Marines far too bunched. Yeah. Like if that had just been spread yeah, that, a little that bit that more final, too. That final engagement at Polt's base where all the fungals hit his Marines, he wasn't as well spread there as he normally was. And you're right, you and I were actually discussing this when we were watching the game. We were like, if he were split a little bit better, he Well, he still had things fight, left at the end of that fight and like held on for another seven minutes or whatever. Like, Yeah, if he had know. won that fight, he actually had the better economy at that moment and could have actually just killed Violet. So really, really close game. I think Polt showed, uh, you know, he can actually be the better player and, and out multitask his opponent. Violet, it's got to be feeling pretty, pretty uh, rough going to this next game. And the next map is going to be on Metropolis. Just a quick update, uh, you know, live in the uh, gameplay one. MC is actually going up against Nori, currently 1-1. One, one. We'll be going to the final map here. Will this one go to the final map to decide who will face Stefano? Will we see the Stefano-Polt storyline once again? Or is Violet going to stand in his